Welcome back. Just to review what we were doing in the last video, we were talking about the reaction of methionine synthase. And methionine synthase was one of those uh, few enzymes in humans that's basically going to use vitamin B12. And this right here, uh, this little uh, kind of square right here, this is representing the center of the Corin ring system that is vitamin B12, and we have a whole video on analyzing that. And at rest, this enzyme has a B12, and the B12 in the center of the Corin ring system has a cobalt, which is a transition metal cation, in the 1 plus oxidation state. Okay, And what I said in the last videos, we used this molecule called N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, and notice that this molecule has a methyl group right here. Okay, And what we talked about was that this methyl group is going to get transferred onto the cobalt cation in the 1 plus state. So now just to give you sort of an intuition on what's happening, okay? So come down here. This over here basically represents the tetrahydrofolate. I've only, you know, drawn the methyl group attached to it. And of course, you know, this is the 5 position on the tetrahydrofolate. And here's the methyl group. Well, cobalt starts off with a plus 1 oxidation state. And you say, okay, well, how is it that a cation is able to act as a nucleophile and essentially attack this carbon. Because, I mean, I mean, you probably, un until you've seen this video or know anything about B12, is you've probably never seen a metal cation act as a nucleophile. And basically, it does this so strongly that actually B12, the cobalt, is actually referred to something called a super nucleophile, okay? And really all this implies is that literally the reduction potential of this cobalt on the methyl group is so high that it's essentially completely spontaneous, okay? So just to give you some intuition on what's happening, okay, what's essentially happening is you can sort of view there, there an orbital on this cobalt that has two electrons in it, okay? And as a whole these two electrons are going to be transferred away from the cobalt, right? And so these two electrons are essentially going to end up on this carbon atom. And of course, you know, this bond's going to break and it's going to come out and abstract a proton from a histidine residue in the active site, okay? But see, the cobalt, what it's literally doing, it's not necessarily like doing a nucleophilic attack, although the reduction potential is super high. It's essentially transferring the two electrons onto, the onto this methyl group. And so what you end up getting at the end of this reaction is, of course, you get the cobalt. But since it transferred away two electrons, now it's in the 3 plus oxidation state. And sort of coordinated to it is you have this right here. So you still have the three hydrogens that are attached to the methyl group, and now you have this lone pair on the carbon. And to be perfectly uh, specific, this lone pair right here is the same two electrons that got transferred from the cobalt right there. Okay, And of course now this, this functional group right here, this methyl anion, of course has a negative charge. But what we typically like to do, because mechanistically it will make a little bit more sense, is we have this cobalt with the 3 plus oxidation state, and we simply just draw it like this. Okay, So what they do typically is they draw what appears to be a covalent bond between the cobalt 3 plus and the methyl group. Okay, But really what it is, is it's this electrostatic interaction between this methyl anion and a cobalt 3 plus. Okay, and just, just to, re to remind you, this reduction potential of the cobalt in reducing this methyl group is so high that the delta G is just incredibly low. Remember that when you have a high reduction potential, the Gibbs free energy change for that is just equal to negative N, which is the number of moles of electron transferred per reaction. In this case, it's 2 times the Faraday constant times the reduction potential. So because the reduction potential is so high, you get a delta G for this that's far less than zero. So it's really spontaneous. So this is a really high reduction potential. Okay. 
And to be specific, it's this methyl group right here that's getting reduced. Okay, and in the process, the nitrogen carbon bond breaks as the electrons there go and abstract a proton from a histidine. And then you'll get the second half of the mechanism. But basically what it is, is this methyl anion interacting electrostatically with the cobalt 3 plus. And this bond right here that I'll do in green, this bond right here, that's called a coordinate covalent bond. It's an extremely strong bond. It's not as strong as a covalent bond. It's a little bit weaker, but it's stronger than, a, than an ionic bond, okay? And that's where we pick up with methionine synthase reductase. So coming back up here to the top, you know, we just talked about that reaction in the last video. We reviewed it again here, but here's the problem. You know, we obviously, once we get the methyl group um, attached to the cobalt 3+, um, homocysteine or L-homocysteine comes in and it receives that methyl group to make this guy which is methionine okay but here's the problem um, anywhere between one to two thousand turnovers of methionine synthase so it's it, it's sort of probabilistic but it turns out that the cobalt is really susceptible to performing a redox reaction with molecular oxygen so if you imagine what's happening is one of the electrons from you know some orbital here you know you have one, you have you know an electron in here and this electron might get transferred onto molecular oxygen right and of course i do the fish hook arrow because it's a one electron transfer and so in the process you end up with a superoxide that's produced because the oxygen picked up the electron and therefore it gets reduced so you can imagine that the cobalt in the center that originally had a one plus oxidation state gets oxidized. And that's exactly what you see here. This particular cobalt now is in the two plus state. And it turns out that in the two plus state, uh, methionine synthesis cobalt is useless. You have to get it back to the one plus state. So it would make sense for you to have an enzyme that reduced the cobalt back into the one plus state. And so this enzyme, methionine synthase reductase, literally is a cobalto reductase. It's not the same cobalto reductase that we saw in B12 synthesis, but it's, it, it's going to function very similarly. But it's going to be a little bit more complicated, and it's going to involve a cytochrome P450 type mechanism. Okay, so let's look at actually this sort of the setup for the cofactors. Okay. So this particular reaction of methionine synthase reductase is going to require one molecule of NADPH. And what's going to happen essentially is NADPH will transfer two electrons onto FAD, a coenzyme that's held in the active site. It'll transfer those electrons to FAD, and that will bring up FAD in the reduced state. Okay. And then what's going to happen is there's a, there's a flavin mononucleotide in the active site. And one at a time, one electron at a time, the FAD in the reduced state will transfer one electron to flavin mononucleotide in the oxidized state. And that brings about flavin mononucleotide in the reduced state, which is basically shown right here, the mechanics of which we won't go into in this video. But essentially, two electrons get transferred from NADPH to FAD, and then the reduced FAD transfers electrons one at a time to FMN, reducing it to FMN in the reduced state. And actually, this electron that sort of comes off of the reduced FMN, okay, this is the electron that goes into methionine synthase, okay? So this is what actually reduces the cobalt 2 plus back into the 1 plus oxidation state. So literally the electron comes directly from the FMN in the reduced state. And of course in the process FMN gets re-oxidized. But in the process, notice what happens. The cobalt gets reduced back into the 1 plus state. And then you're free to do... Um, the last part of this mechanism, which we'll look at in just a minute. But I just want to make sure you understand the mechanics of how the electrons move in methionine synthase reductase. NADPH transfers two electrons to FAD, and then the reduced FAD transfers electrons one at a time to FA, or excuse me, to FMN. So then FMN gets reduced, and then it transfers one electron to 
uh, methionine synthase is cobalt, reducing it to the one plus state. And then that, of course, regenerates FMN in the oxidized state. So this FMN right here was regenerated in the oxidized state. And then it's free to pick up another electron from the FAD semiquinone. So this guy right here, this is called the FAD semiquinone. Okay. So as soon as the FMN transfers an electron into methionine synthesis cobalt, you generate the FAD semiquinone, and then the same FMN that originally received the first electron can then pick up another electron from these FAD semiquinone. That, of course, regenerates FAD, and then, of course, you generate FMN in the reduced state, which then can then transfer another electron into methionine synthesis cobalt. Okay, so that, that, that's sort of the mechanics of how the electrons flow. So basically, um, it's very similar to the cytochrome P450 reductase electron flow that we looked at in a previous video. Okay, in fact, it's identical. So the electrons ultimately come from NADPH, but they come directly from flavin mononucleotide in the reduced state. And it transfers one electron at a time into the cobalt of methionine synthase, okay? But that doesn't end the mechanism, okay? Because the cobalt now has to accept a methyl group, okay? And the way it's going to do that is from S adenosyl methionine. So this reaction, this is still catalyzed by methionine synthase reductase. And in fact, because we're transferring a methyl group at the same time, this particular reaction is called a reductive methylation. So this is a reductive methylation. And the reason it's a reductive methylation is because we reduce the cobalt back into the one plus state, and then we're going to transfer a methyl group onto the cobalt. So once again, just like in the case of N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, you sort of have to imagine that there's this uh, orbital here for the cobalt plus that we just generated that has two electrons in it. And keep in mind that that reduction potential for cobalt is extremely high. So what it's essentially going to do is it's going to transfer two electrons onto this carbon of S adenosyl methionine. So this guy right here, this is adenosyl methionine. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated as SAM. Okay. So the methyl group receives those two electrons, and that breaks this bond, right? because that gives carbon a valence of eight shared electrons, so this bond right here breaks. And so what you get out of this reaction is, number one, you get this guy, which is adenosyl homocysteine. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated as SAH, S adenosyl homocysteine. But then you get this um, cobalt here with the methyl group. And just remember, it's sort of this methyl anion in a coordinate covalent bond with this cobalt in the 3 plus state. And the reason it gets the 3 plus state is because it transferred two electrons to that methyl group. So that mechanistic step we just saw, that was catalyzed by methionine synthase reductase. And just keep in mind, it's a reductase because ultimately what's happening is the cobalt is reducing this methyl group right here okay now we're gonna pick up with we're, we're assuming now that we've added that methyl group onto the cobalt and now it's in the 3 plus state now we're gonna actually look at what happens with methionine synthase okay so this is something we're used to seeing this is sort of review from the last video but I think it's important that you see it once again okay so keep in mind that with methionine synthase we have this critical histidine residue in the active site okay and so this histidine is going to depro deprotonate the thiol of this guy, which is L-homocysteine, right? And that's going to induce nucleophilic attack of the effective thiolate on the methyl group as part of, of methylcobalamin here in the active site, okay? Now, just one thing I want to have you bear in mind, okay? So you have to imagine you have this you have this cobalt in the 3 plus state, right? And this methyl group, let me draw it like this. You have to sort of imagine, you have to sort of imagine that it's not really like a methyl group in a direct covalent bond with the cobalt, but that it's sort of this methyl anion that's sitting right there, 
okay? It's a strong electrostatic interaction, but it's not quite covalent, okay? So you have this methyl anion that's sitting there, and let me do this in orange just so you can see it. So I'm going to do the same nucleophilic attack, so the thiolate of homocysteine is going to attack this carbon. Now, keep in mind that thiolate is acting as a Lewis base, okay? So how many electrons are being transferred from the thiolate? Well, just like any nucleophilic attack, it's two electrons. So let's think about how many electrons this methyl anion has, okay? I'll do these in light blue. So each one of these carbon-hydrogen bonds represents two electrons, right? So this is two electrons, that's two, this is two right here. So overall, in terms of uh, sigma bonds, there's six, and then of course you have two here that makes eight, okay? So when the two electrons get transferred from this thiolate of homocysteine, if nothing else happened, then this carbon would have a total of 10 shared electrons, okay? And that can't be the case, because that would violate the octet rule, carbons in the second period. So what essentially has to happen is, effectively, this lone pair on here is going to get transferred back to the cobalt 3+. Plus. And that's what generates this very critical thing um, right here, which is the cobalt as part of B12 in the 1 plus oxidation state. And now what's able to happen is this cobalt in the 1 plus state is free to do another nucleophilic attack or electron transfer to the methyl group of N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. And just keep in mind what happens now is we've regenerated this guy, which is this is L. L-methionine, right? And then also when we did that original deprotonation of the homocysteine thiol, we generated histidine in the protonated state. So just keep in mind, this isn't too important to realize, but you have to regenerate the resting state. So there would have to be a water here that's allowed into the active site. And the water is going to do a proton exchange with this histidine. And of course, in the process, what does that generate? Well, it generates a hydronium, right? I think that's pretty obvious. But then it also regenerates the resting state of histidine. So let me draw this real quick. Okay, so we get the resting state of this critical histidine residue back. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of intuition on what methionine synthase reductase is. Let's just do a very quick recap. Okay, so just keep in mind that with methionine synthase, it's absolutely dependent okay it's dependent on this cobalt here in the b12 it's dependent on that being in the one plus oxidation state the one plus oxidation state of cobalt when it's um, you know coordinated in there by the core and ring system it's a super nucleophile but it doesn't become so super uh, once it gets into the two plus state which can happen upon interaction and redox with molecular oxygen so part of the uh, genius of methionine synthase reductase is you don't have to synthesize another B12. Or you don't have to get another one from the diet. You don't have to make a whole new enzyme. You just have another enzyme available to re-reduce the cobalt 2 plus back into the 1 plus state. And then what happens is uh, you methylate the 1 plus state using adenosyl methionine and that's called the reductive methylation. So that was the mechanism of methionine synthase reductase, and we also got to see part of the mechanism of methionine synthase. So I hope this video helped you. See you in the next video.